FTP. Have you heard of FTP before? If you are working with a web designer or a web team, you might hear them talking about like your hosting account and wanting to have your FTP information. Or if even if you're using your own website, um, perhaps you're setting up a WordPress website or something, you might have seen the term FTP or heard about it and not really understand what that means. So what is FTP? FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And what this is, is it's a way that your uh, files on your computer talk to the files that you have on your hosting account server for your website. So say you have a hosting account with something like HostGator or Bluehost or GoDaddy, and you have your files all there, and that's where your website is uh, sourced from. So when you go to a website, you see different web pages. All of those pages are saved files with a hosting account on a hosting server. And so for you, in order to be able to edit those files or change things like images or content, you need to be able to access those files to edit them and then re-upload them again. And WordPress creates this beautiful interface for you to be able to access a database to be able to change those files. But sometimes you want to change special things. You want to edit like the templates of um, pages in WordPress or you might want to change out certain images or change the logo or something if you're working with a template. Or you might be into building your own website and you're thinking about, you know, how could you just change an entire page or edit the full page? Anyway, the way to do that is by a thing called FTP, File Transfer Protocol. And that is this, this um, well, it's actually a process. File Transfer Protocol is just, it's a name of a, kind of a process. That's the way that your files on your computer talk to your hosting server so you can update them. So how do you do that? How do you get to be able to do, use this service? You can use free software. Um, there's tons of sources out there for PC versus Mac. Um, you can also use software like Dreamweaver. Macromedia Dreamweaver um, is a web designing software that a lot of web designers use as well as programmers. Programmers don't like it quite as much um, because it, from a programming standpoint, it makes it uh, kind of nasty code sometimes. But from a design perspective, it can be a useful tool. So Mac Media Dreamweaver has this FTP service built into it. But if you don't have that software, and say you are using a WordPress website or some other website, you might want another application to be able to talk to the files on your hosting server. Um, and some of the free ones, let's see, there's um, Coffee FTP, I think, Coffee Cup, something like that. There's tons of them out there. If you just search Google for free FTP software, you'll find free downloads. My favorite is FileZilla. It's um, compatible with PC or Mac. It's made by Mozilla, the people that make the Firefox browser. And this is what you're looking at here on my screen. It's the FileZilla interface. And I just wanna show you an example so you can kinda of understand what I'm talking about. So if you have FileZilla, you can download it for free and just install it. It's gonna look like this whenever you set it up. What you see here on the left side are the files on, right now, you can see the desktop is highlighted. So in the desktop directory, in my desktop, these are the files that are sitting on my desktop. These are just like kind of random files I've been working with today. So this is the stuff that I have on my end of the, the deal, right? So if I want to start making a transaction with a website to be able to change things, I need to be able to speak to it in some way. And FileZilla is going to be the method that I use to speak to it. So say I'm connecting to a site. I go to File, and then I go to Site Manager. And this, um, for right now, these are the sites I have loaded in here. These are ones I currently have to be working on. So say I want to connect to any one of these, like Tech Diva Media, that's my own website. So if I want to connect to it, I would just select it. Now I would have entered, um, actually let me go back to show you. Uh, if you see here, next to Tech Diva Media, you see my um, FTP details. This is what a web designer might ask you for, a web company might ask you for. Um, so this is the address that my computer uses to talk to my hosting server, ftp.techdivamedia.com. It might be ftp.whateveryourwebsitedomainnameis.com, or it could be something else. It just kind of depends on your server. Um, and then the logon type is normal. Um, that means that I have a username, and then I have a password. And this username and password then allows me access to the files on my server, my hosting account. So when I click Connect, um, let's see. what it does is it connects and it enters my username and password on my hosting server account. And then you'll see, here it is. On this side are all my files in my main root folder. Now public HTML, this folder is where all website files are held. All this other stuff is stuff that's just irrelevant to what we're trying to do as far as editing a website. 
So you would click on the public HTML folder, and now I'm looking at the files that are actually on my live website. Um, now my live website is a WordPress website, so these are all PHP files because WordPress runs with that sort of programming. So these are all the files, um, and then there's different folders, like WP content, that's where you'll find like plugins and themes. Say if I wanted to upload and change a theme on my website, I could do it manually. I could download the theme, and then I would use something like FileZilla, and I would find the theme on my local drive, and I would just click it and drag it and upload it. Now these are the themes I have uploaded currently on my own website, I have lots of themes. I'm actually only using one theme. But I would just upload it here, it would do the transfer, um, let's see, I can actually show you an example here in a second. But it would do the transfer, and then I would go into my WordPress and admin panel, go to themes, and select the theme I just uploaded. It would show up there automatically. Also, if I have plugins, you can manually install plugins, download the plugin, and then again, use FileZilla, upload the plugin to this plugin folder. There's lots of stuff you can do here. Um, the WP admin is often a file that you wouldn't access, but this has the page templates for all of the different designs I have and all the different layouts I have on my website design. So those are all the templates. So if I wanted to modify a template, say to change the design or functionality, I would grab one of these files and edit it on my end. Um, but say I'm gonna add uh, like an image, right? So I would go to WP content, I would go to um, uploads, and here we're gonna find all of my images. So say I click 2012, and then if I wanted to upload an image there, I just grab it and drag it and just like that, it would upload. And you can see right there it's uploading. And bada bing, bada boom. There it is. Now it's on my hosting server. It's now a file that I can access by typing in the file address, accessing it on my hosting server. It'll show up for me if I'm in a web browser. That's pretty cool. I can select that um, image now on my website and be able to access it because it's now on my server, not my main computer. It, it just copies up there. It doesn't actually remove it from my main computer. It just copies it. So now I'll just delete it. So anyway, that's how you would add files. Now, if I was going to edit something, um, I would use, for this case, it's a WordPress site, so I would use WordPress to edit a page. But say it wasn't. Say it was an HTML website or something. Um, I'll show you, if I was to modify, um, say, uh, a page layout. Hmm, like, I think I'm using, I think my theme is called gliders. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, say I'm going to edit one of the pages. I might edit the CSS, the style sheet. So I can click on style CSS and now it's downloaded to my local desktop, right? And now I can view it, I can open it, and I can edit it. So I click edit and then you can select what program to use to edit it. I like to use a program called Text Wrangler. Um, it is, I think it's also a free download. You can just, I think it's for PC and Mac. It might just be for Mac, but I think it's for both. So I would use Text Wrangler um, to open up this file. And now you can see, here it is. This is the page code. So as a programmer, this is pretty normal. Um, as someone that's not used to code, this could look really intimidating. But if you knew exactly what to change in here, I could go in, edit the code, file, save it, and then I could re-upload it to my website using FileZilla, and that would replace the existing file, and it would have my update in place. Um, and again, you want to be careful doing that if you're trying to work on your own website and not sure exactly what you're doing because one little change of code could really screw up a lot of things. So anytime you're gonna edit or modify a file on your site, especially if you're a little bit unsure of what you're doing, but actually just all the time, always, 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 make a backup copy. So download it, rename it to something called style-old or whatever, and then work on a newer copy of that file. So that way you always have a backup. I have screwed myself over so many times by not backing up files. It's like, it's a nightmare. So always back up what you're doing before you start working on it. Anyway, that's probably um, enough information for one video. I just want to show you this interface. Again, it's a free download. It's called FileZilla, and that's going to help you to be able to talk to your website should you ever want to. If you have any questions, just email me. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>